Good Thursday morning. It's that time of year again. Hope everyone's having a great day and finding some rest here in these chaotic times. Um, but I hope most importantly that you are preparing your heart, um, not for the hustle and bustle, but for celebrating the true meaning of Christmas. Um, we want to go ahead and get into today's devotion. Um, echo Brother Jody's comments at the end of his devotion there. Um, appreciate Brother Tommy uh, and, and what all that he does um, for the church. Um, all that he's done for me in my life. Uh, obviously, that is my father-in-law and the father of my beautiful bride and my best friend. So I thank you most of all for that. Um, but we want to go ahead and continue on with um, talking about some of the things that spoke to us during the, the message on Sunday, and it was a wonderful message, um, but entitled this one, uh, Hope and Peace, or Peace and Hope, um, and just a couple verses of scripture, and Brother Tommy was uh, talking out of, or at least the idea was coming out of, um, the shipwreck, when Paul and uh, everyone on board was talking, uh, and, and everything seemed hopeless. And um, and uh, the message that uh, Brother Tommy um, was preaching, um, he was talking about uh, the grace we live by. Do we have enough grace? Is it the same grace or is it enough grace to die by? Um, and so he asked three very important questions out of that. Uh, number one, he said, what is, um, what does it mean to be lost? What, it, what does it mean to be lost? And um, what does it mean to be saved? And then he talked about conviction. Those were the three topics that I wrote down in my notes. And, you know, um, we live in a world who tries to sensationalize everything, uh, always looking for, you know, uh, a middle of the road to ease conscience, uh, to justify our own beliefs, whatever it might be. But, you know, uh, you can read God's word and you find out that there's two sides. There's the saved and there's those that are lost. And everyone comes from one being lost to being saved because of conviction. Um, and conviction obviously is that um, the spirit when he, um, you know, kind of pricks our heart of we, you know, we start understanding the, the, you know, age of accountability, what's right, what's wrong and everything else. And the problem with it is, is a lot of people in the world today and you look, watch the news and videos and things like that. And you'll see that, you know, most people don't want to be um, having a cage of age of accountability. They, they want to still through whatever, um, believe that they still have the right to do what they want, how they want, as long as they want, and there'll be no repercussions from it. So they deny the convicting spirit of what's right and what's wrong. Um, but a couple of verses of scripture that came to my mind as, as he was preaching those. One is John 16 and 33. It says, these things I've spoken to you, that in me, you might have peace. Uh, and then he tied that into uh, Paul and the shipwreck and how that they was going to be saved through that. Uh, but then he also talked about um, James Wilson, who a uh, big part of our church as well, and had passed uh, here in the last little bit. But um, And he was talking about that and, and the peace that he had of being ready to go. Um, but Jesus is telling us here in John, these things I've spoken to you that in me you might have peace. In the world you're going to have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And so as we celebrate and prepare to celebrate the holidays, um, the uh, Christmas, you know, peace is what it is. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, we hear of the war in, you know, between Russia and Ukraine and the divisions at every segment of society, um, both, you know, in the United States and, and around the world as well. And so peace is one of those kind of forgotten things that we hear about now. It's just more or less people have settled in to, you know, division, strife, 
um, you know, the opposite of peace. But the whole Christmas story is about peace. Um, he says to be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And the reason then is because he sent his son into the world. And then in 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8 says, Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Um, again, Brother Tommy tied that in of, of faith. Um, we are saved through faith. Um, God's grace we accept through faith. Through faith, even though we wasn't one of the shepherds or the angels that was at the birth of our Savior, we, we believe that through faith that he was born um, and laid in a manger uh, of a virgin birth and that he walked on this earth. We accept that by faith. We accept by faith that he hung upon a cross, being the perfect sacrifice and dying for our sins. Um, and by faith, we believe that he resurrected. Um, he is in heaven. And as his word says, he's coming back. That is where we find the peace. Because of our faith, we have peace. None of these events have we seen. The birth, the death, the resurrection. But we believe. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And, you know, I think that as Brother Tommy was talking about his conversation with Brother James, um, that was one of the things that James had come to realize, that he was, you know, he was ready to go. And, um, you know, that's my prayer for all of us, not just through the holiday season, but each day that we'll live with the peace, uh, that we'll, you know, if Brother Tommy asked the question, what is your greatest achievement and a lot of people would say, well, my job, my title, my climbing up the ranks to get where I'm at today. Um, it, you know, a lot of people in the coaching world will say, well, I remember when we won this or we had this season or whatever. Um, but the bottom line is this. Our greatest achievement is the day that we realized that we were lost through conviction and we gave our heart and life to Jesus. That will be your greatest achievement till the day you die. Um, if that's not, if you're hanging it on something that's been worldly, something you've gained on your own, um, there's a lot more out there for you. And this holiday season, I pray that you will take the time to realize that there's peace uh, that was born in a manger that died on the cross uh, and still is making intercession with us today. Um, his grace is still extended. And my prayer for Christmas is that if you've not found it, that you will, and if you have found it, that you will celebrate it. God bless.